All right, so here we go, lady, 6.6. .6. Uh, this is, I think, the last section in this chapter, but it deals with this final form of what we call a linear equation, okay? So hopefully you're all right with what we call a relation, you know, how two numbers are related. Usually we put them on an x and a y axis, right? Um, we've got a lot of different types of graphs that we can have. We just plot points, and when things line up in a line, we call that a linear equation or linear function and then what happens is because we've got it on an xy axis we can end up writing equations and one form of the linear equation is y equals mx plus b we've looked at this it's called the slope y intercept form where this is your slope right and the b is your y intercept this is one form of the equation that we've looked at the next one see we're given a point just a random point and the slope then you would be able to uh, find the equation by using another formula that looks like this, y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x minus x1, uh, where m is equal to your slope again, right? And your x1, your y1, is a point that you're given, all right? So that's another form of the equation. Um, they all have their uses and they all have their applications, okay? But they are all doing basically the same thing. What form you want or what form you use depends on the situation that you have. This is best for graphing. We only use this to turn an equation into this so that we can get the slope and the y-intercept. So this is a way of getting the numbers, the slope and the point, into a form that we want, either this one or this one. Okay, and this is what we call general form, AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Okay, now uh, we have some parameters or some dis definitions of the coefficients AB and the constant C, right? A is a whole number, which means it has to be positive. Okay, so we always start with a positive X. B and C are just integers, which means we have no fractions. So for example, if I gave you a question or a um, yeah, an equation right in this form say say we had it in y equals mx plus b form well what you do is you see okay this is a positive x so i'm going to bring everything over there so the 2x stays there the positive y you have to subtract y you subtract y the minus 3 is already there boom you're done Okay, sometimes you might have a trickier situation. Say it's y is equal to 2 thirds x uh, plus 1. Well, we don't want fractions because not only they have to be integers or whole numbers, these ones, okay? So there are no fractions involved. So what you have to do now is multiply everything by... 3, right? So you end up with 3y is equal to 2x plus 3, and then we put it in order, okay? And boom, there you go. So just a couple of examples. We're going to do a lot of this, so uh, just to get your mathematical juices flowing here. So now uh, we've got a bunch of different situations, right? What if a was equal to 0? What if a was equal to 0? Well, if a was equal to 0, it means that all this would be gone. So you'd end up with by plus c equals zero, which would be, let's put some numbers in there. Uh, let's just say it's 1y uh, plus 2 is equal to zero. Well, that would be y is equal to negative 2, if you looked at it that way. So what does that mean? That means... If you remember looking at some xy axes and looking at horizontal and vertical lines, the line y equals negative 2 is right here. It is a horizontal line, okay, that has a slope of 0, right? Okay, so that's a special situation. If you don't have, if your A is zero, you end up having a horizontal line. Take a guess what would happen if C was zero or if B was zero. So let's look what would happen if B was zero. All right, well, that means that this part would be gone. So what you end up with is, let's put numbers now, 2x plus 6 equals zero. 
Okay, so that means that I don't have any y. Well, let's solve this now. 2x equals negative 3. Oh, wait. Uh, negative 6. x equals, divide by 2, divided by 2, negative 3. x equals negative 3. And if you remember what that looks like on an x, y axis, find out where x equals negative 3. Well, 1, 2, 3 x equals negative 3 all up and down that line. So what we have now is a vertical line, right? And hopefully you remember that that has undefined slope. Basically means it has no slope. And think about why, right? It's uh, not why the value of y, but think about the question. Why is there no slope? It's because in a vertical line, you have no delta x. You have no run at all. Your run is zero, and you can't divide by zero. Okay, That's not going to happen. So what if c was zero? Oh, my goodness. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but let's check it out. Right? Let's put numbers in 2x plus 3y plus zero. Boom, equals like that. Okay, and now you get 3y equals negative 2x. Then you get y is equal to negative 2 thirds x. Follow what I did there. If you can't see how I did this, this is now in y equals mx plus b form. This is now in y equals mx plus b form. And you can see that your b is equal to 0. What does that mean? It means that it goes through the origin. The slope is negative two-thirds, so down two over three. It's something like this. But the key is the line goes through the origin. The line goes through origin. So what you can tell me, or what we can actually figure out here, uh, is something a little bit uh, funky too. Okay. Uh, what ends up happening here is that your C value here, your C value is actually your Y intercept when you have it in this form here, because if X is zero and Y is zero, what you're left with is C. Okay. So C in this case is your Y intercept. You might want to write that down up here. C is equal to Y intercept. It's just kind of cool. All right. Now, uh, let's continue on here and take that off. Put in general form. So let's look at a couple of questions here. Let's put this in general form. Okay, and what that means is that you have to, well, we just did one like this, get rid of the fraction, first of all. So we multiply everything by 3. And that's going to be 3 times negative 2 thirds x plus 3 times 4. So here, 3y. Here, minus 6 over 3, which is minus 2, or you can see the 3s cancel. This becomes 12. Now the x is negative on this side. What do we want to do if it's negative on this side? We want to bring it over to the positive side. So if I add 2x, I add 2x. The 3y is already here. It's positive. This plus 12, I have to subtract 12. Minus 12 equals 0. Um, here is, you don't need the plus, here is your final version in general form okay so it's going to be 2x plus 3y minus 12 equals 0 and it doesn't really matter what side your zero is on it can be on this side as well okay the, the jumps back and forth now uh, one weird thing is what if i moved everything here what if i moved 2x plus 3y minus 12 equals 0 what if i moved it to the other side it, well does it make sense that it would look like this right all the signs are different. Plus 2, minus 2. Plus 3, minus 3. Minus 12, plus 12. These are both absolutely correct, but we're going to try and get used to writing it with a positive x. Okay? Uh, what about graphing the line 3x plus 2y minus 18? How about graphing the line... 3x plus 2y minus 18 equals 0. Well, we know that if we want a graph, we want it in this form. So what we do is we rearrange it. 2y is going to stay there. This is going to go to the other side, as is the negative 18, making it a positive 18. I then divide everything by 2. I get y, negative 3 halves x, plus 9. You have a slope 
of negative 3 halves, you have a y-intercept of 9. You should be able to graph that. Okay? Um, you can also graph this using intercepts, right? So, the y-intercept, x equals 0. So, uh, that means that you can have 3 times 0 plus 2 times y minus 18 equals boom, right? So, that's gone. 2y equals 18. y equals 9. Look at that. That's your y-intercept. x-intercept. That's y equals 0. Well, let's take this and go 3x plus 2 times 0 minus 18 equals 0. Well, that means 3x is equal to 18. x is equal to 6. So if you looked at a graph, right, it's going to cross the x-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to cross the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? So this is 0, 9. This is 6, 0. You'd be able to find the slope from that as well, right? Because it's down 9 over 6. So minus 9 over 6 is negative 3 over 2, which is the slope we have. Um, intercepts are a very, very valuable tool when you're dealing with linear functions, okay? I think I got one more here. How are we going to find the slope of this bad boy right here? Well, I'm thinking that you probably have a pretty good idea because if you rearrange it, right, into this form again, you're going to be able to find all those things. Now, some of you are getting the hang of uh, the algebra. Some of you got a pretty good idea. I'm going to ask you to look at this and uh, see something. Would it be easier to solve this for the y on the left side or y on the right side? And another question would be, is this the same thing? Is y equals mx plus b the same thing as mx plus b equals y, excuse me? Right? It doesn't really matter which way you put it. So in this case, what I'd like you to see is that you could actually put the 3y on this side. 3y is equal to 4x plus 9. Now, you know, if you don't like it over there, then put it over here. It's the same thing. Okay? And then you've got it kind of without doing all the steps. You don't have to divide by a negative number or anything. I like to keep things positive. Now, we want to find out what that y is. So we divide everything by 3. y is equal to 4 thirds x plus 3. Boom, your slope is 4 thirds. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. A quick recap of a few of these functions or uh, forms of the equation, and then uh, an introduction and some examples on the general form. Hope that helped. See ya.